On Sunday, August 7th, 2016, 10-year-old Caleb Schwab began the 264-step climb to the top of Verrückt, the world's tallest water slide in the magnificent and massive Schlitterbahn water park in Kansas City. The slide was simply an irresistible attraction. It is even taller than the Statue of Liberty in New York. Everything was fine as Caleb got into the raft along with another two women, and off they went, downwards like a rocket, when suddenly disaster struck. The raft became airborne, and Caleb's head collided with one of the metal bars that held safety nets encasing the raft. Caleb's head was decapitated in a gruesome, indescribable way that killed him instantly. His head and body drifted down the water chute, ending up at the pool, located at the bottom of the ride. The scene was from hell, heartbreaking and terrifying beyond imagination. The two women who were in the same raft with Caleb also sustained some minor facial injuries. As it later turned out, the whole fiasco was to blame on two dreamers who wanted to create an unparalleled water slide that offers a unique experience that would attract people from around the world. These two men's egos were just too huge. They didn't even bother to use math and proper engineering methods while creating the stunning yet deadly Verrückt water slide. Stay tuned to learn all the details of Caleb Schwab's horrific death by the Verrückt water slide at the infamous Schlitterbahn water park. The Kansas City Schlitterbahn water park is massive, very pleasant, thrilling, and one of the five Schlitterbahn parks in America. Every year, more than two million visitors go to these five parks to plunge down slides, zoom through twisting tube chutes, and float and swim in man-made rivers and enormous pools. Some even say that the park is the aquatic equivalent of Disneyland. The majestic Verrückt water slide, which means insane in German, is truly unique. At 170 feet high, it is taller than Niagara Falls. People from all over visit the park just to try out this awesome and dangerous slide. To take the ride, one must first take the more than 200 stair steps to the top and get weighed, because the raft can accommodate only three riders that combined cannot exceed a particular weight. Then, the three riders inside the rubber raft would plummet down a nearly vertical, 17-story drop at speeds reaching up to 68 miles per hour. The moment they reached the bottom, they would shoot up a 55-foot-tall incline, the equivalent of a five-story building, before racing down one last steep slope, finally coming to a stop in a long, water-filled shallow pool. When the slide opened to the public in July 2014, riders described the slide as terrifying, horrible, and terrific. By all means, the Verrückt is the flagship of the Schlitterbahn Park. It was only natural for Caleb to keep insisting that his parents let him take the dangerous plunge. Even the view from the slide's top platform is majestic, where one can see the entire Kansas City skyline. Caleb's father, Scott, is a Kansas legislator and was invited by the Schlitterbahn Park along with his family and other government officials for a free family fun day with an all-you-can-eat open buffet. Caleb's father couldn't resist the offer. He knew his children loved the park and always begged him to take him there. So he decided to not pass on the opportunity. After all, what could go wrong? The park should be safe. According to the park's rules, a Farouk slide rider had to be at least 54 inches tall. Caleb's height and weight fit the park's criteria, and his parents simply couldn't say no. And off little excited Caleb went for the thrill of his life. He and his parents simply had no reason to suspect that the slide is dangerous and had some dark secrets. When Caleb reached Ferrick's top platform, he stepped into the launch area in front of the raft, and an employee secured him to his seat with a shoulder strap. Behind him in the same raft, 
two sisters sat. Seconds later, the slider's gate swung open and a conveyor belt pushed the raft towards a steep slope and boom. The raft began hurtling downwards at an immense speed. Within a few seconds, the raft reached the bottom of the steep hill and swooped up the second 55-foot hill. Somehow, Caleb's safety straps failed him and did not keep him secure in his place, just as the raft began to climb the second hill. The raft went airborne, which is something that shouldn't happen. He flew up into the air and his head collided with a net and a semicircular metal hoop that arched over the top of the slide. The hoop sliced into his neck and he was instantly decapitated. His head and body flew out of the raft and landed on the chute. Waiting for Caleb at the bottom of the Farukt was one of his brothers along with numerous spectators. As the boy's small corpse slid toward the run-out pool, everyone began to scream. His mother rushed, thinking her son was merely injured, but some onlookers blocked her path and prevented her from reaching the scene. They told her that it is better if she didn't see the boy's body. It was a chilling, bloody scene that breaks the heart. His family was devastated and probably emotionally damaged beyond repair. The investigations by the authorities and journalists began immediately. They were immediately shocked to find that their state allows water parks to be self-inspected, which is something that should never be allowed, yet it was a reality in Kansas. The only other state that has such lax laws was Texas. The investigation revealed that many of the slides' users often complained that the shoulder straps were too loose and their rafts caught air causing them to get banged around inside the raft. One former Schlitterbahn Park lifeguard literally said that he and his co-workers found the slide to be quite scary. They even used to get asked every day before the slide opened to volunteers for testing the ride. Most of them refused. At first, the investigators struggled to find information. However, they eventually found out that the park's employees were required to submit regular operation reports about the rides they monitored. These reports revealed that the infamous Farrukh slide had many problems that were never revealed to the public, nor fixed. The investigators uncovered that 11 parkgoers had been injured on Farrukh between August 31, 2014 and August 5, 2016, two of them merely days before Caleb's death. As the investigation advanced, Everything began to look even gloomier. Sifting through Farrukh's maintenance reports, the investigators found that the park's management avoided or delayed making crucial repairs that would have taken the ride out of commission. Soon, the case was sealed when the investigators learned that on July 3rd, 2014, one week before the ride's grand opening, an engineering firm hired by the park's owners to perform accelerometer tests on Farrukh's rafts had issued a report suggesting that if the combined weight of the three passengers in a raft was between 400 and 550 pounds, there was a good probability the raft would go airborne on the second hill. Nevertheless, the rides opened anyway, and the report was swept under the carpet. In 2017, the water park and various companies associated with the design and construction of Ferrucht paid Caleb's family a $20 million settlement. To this day, no one has been able to figure out what exactly happened. Was there a problem with the distribution of the three passengers' weight that caused the raft to lift off into the air? Did something go wrong with a cannon nozzle that shot the raft up the second hill? We may never know. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell button to get notified every time we upload a new video that will take you to the heart of the scenes and mysteries of some of the most terrifying incidents, accidents, disasters, and paranormal events from around the world.